morning, everybody. I hope you've had a wonderful day thus far. I'd like to begin by asking everyone here to do one really quite simple thing. Raise your hand if you think that you are stupid. <laughs> great, great, great. You may lower them. OK. I have a second somewhat similar request, and that is for you to raise your hand if you think humanity and all of humans are also stupid. Perfect, thank you. So physicist Albert Einstein, we all know him, once said, two things are infinite, the universe and human stupidity. And I'm not yet completely sure about the universe. <laughs> yeah. Uh, see, I really love this quote, which is a little bit odd for me and a little bit out of character, because I'm not one of those quote people, you know, those live, laugh, love, take each day one step at a time kind of people. But I love this quote because it compares something I hate to think about with something I love to think about, the universe and stupidity. So the universe. I really, really, really quite hate the universe because somehow the universe is infinite, but at the same time it's expanding, right? Like that doesn't make sense. And in relation to the in, uh, universe, Earth is like a grain of sand on a beach. And so I go into like an existential crisis kind of circulation when I think about the universe. On the other hand, I love to talk about stupidity. <laughs> yeah, specifically, I love to judge stupid people. Because we can all, ag I hope we can all agree, that watching someone do something stupid is quite cathartic. It boosts your ego, it makes you feel better about yourself, because you think to yourself, oh, I never stoop that low, right? <laughs> but alas, Einstein's quote also reminded me of a book I read this summer titled The Basic Laws of Human Stupidity by Carlo Cipolla. As you may be able to get from the title, Cipolla goes through the laws and rules he deems true about all so-called stupid people in the planet. The first of which I find very fitting to Einstein's quote. Cipolla states, ultimately and inevitably, everyone underestimates the number of stupid people in circulation. Right. Ultimately and inevitably, everyone underestimates the number of stupid people in circulation. What does that even mean? Well, to begin, we first need to formulate a concise understanding of the idea of stupidity, specifically human stupidity, and all the way that us, humans, are so stupid. <laughs> so step one, you go to Google and you look up stupidity definition, which I most definitely did not do. That will give you behavior that shows a lack of good sense or judgment. Yet to me, this seems quite perspective-based. I may, for example, think that Jake buying 100 apples lacks good sense or judgment. I mean, what's he going to do with 100 apples, right? And surely before he gets the chance to eat all 100 apples, they would rot. But perhaps Jake is buying 100 apples to feed his 99 other friends. We never know. Hence to Jake, his actions are not stupid, as I've seen it. Other, more real-life examples of this exist, such as mask wearing previous to the pandemic. In Japan, many people wore masks in order to prevent the spread of illness and disease in the winter, such as influenza, and to prevent pollen intake in the spring. Up to 150 years ago, masks have been recorded being worn in Japan to prevent fine particles from entering into the body. On the other hand, many Western societies and cultures, such as the ones I'm from, the UK, Australia, USA, much of Europe, don't do this, or didn't before the pandemic. Instead, masks were really only reserved for medical use only. Hence, me being from these Western communities and societies, distinctly remember moving back into the international school system a couple of years ago and being confused as to why some of my peers would wear masks when they had just a slight cold. Back then, I probably would have just stayed home, right? You get a couple days off school, you get to hang out, maybe go on your phone, right? How, so I perceived mask wearing as being without a better sense or judgment as staying at home was the obviously superior solution to having a slight cold. However, my peers who had different cultural experiences and thus perspectives on life likely would have thought the same about me staying home when I could have just worn a mask. To each of us, the actions taken by the other are stupid. But we each wouldn't consider ourselves stupid, right? So how can we, as a human collective, define stupidity if it's based off of different things and each of us perceive what is and isn't stupid in different ways? 
Wobalas Axel of the University of Cambridge puts our perspective on stupidity down to three main things. Confidence, ignorance, absent-mindedness, and lack of control. If a person such as myself were to see someone tackling a high-risk situation without proper skills or training, confidence, ignorance, or doing something they know they shouldn't be doing as a result of not thinking it through, absent-mindedness, or not being able to fight their impulse to not do something, lack of control, I would instinctively think that that person's actions, and hence that person, are stupid. So it seems almost unbeatable, because we all do stupid things almost every day, right? But we aren't all stupid. I'm not a stupid person, right? Well, science might say differently in some respects. Evolutionarily, our brains sometimes don't think properly, and sometimes science makes us make these stupid decisions. So Paul Glimcher is a neuroeconomist who works at NYU. And basically, he looks at how neuroscience and decision-making impact our day-to-day -day lives in regards to the economy. Through his studies and tests on neurons, Glimcher found that neurons in the brain make the fastest possible connection between two points when asked to make a decision. This would have been a survival technique, evolutionarily, in order to help us make the fastest decisions in life or death situations. The thing is, we've known about this. We've known about this for a really long time. We've known about neural networks in the brain and their connection to decision-making and memory retention. However, what's more remarkable is that Glimcher found how these are impacting our lives today. Because today, we don't need to run from the likes of saber-toothed tigers. Our everyday threats might be forgetting to do your homework. But still, our brain goes into this life or death uh, survival situation and makes sometimes the fastest decision not always the most logical, i.e. lying to your teacher, saying, oh no, I'm sorry, miss, my dog ate my homework. <laughs> so, Glimcher tested this through candy bars. He placed in front of recipients their favorite candy bar accompanied with another candy bar they liked less, and then asked them to choose one. So what do we think happened, right? Everybody obviously chose their favorite candy bar. Who wouldn't? However, when Glimcher added more and more and more candy bars, say 20 different types of candy bars in total, the brain struggled to make that logical distinction, and oftentimes the candidates, candidates and recipients did not choose their favorite candy bar. Fairly stupid, right? And all because our brain goes into survival mode and makes the fastest decision, which isn't always the most logical. So how can we define stupidity? If it's based on cultural context, but also our upbringing and on scientific systems, how can we define stupidity? And are all humans then inherently a little bit stupid? Glimcher would probably say yes. We all make stupid decisions quite frequently, but not because we are inherently and totally and utterly stupid, but because our brain goes into survival mode. And returning to the example of mask wearing previous to the pandemic, the way we are brought up impacts what we perceive to be stupid and who we perceive to be stupid. But that person isn't necessarily stupid, merely our perception of them and maybe of themselves. I guess that's really what I'm trying to say. Humans are inherently, yes, a little bit stupid. I mean, we evolved to make stupid decisions in order to survive. But that doesn't make each and every one of you here today entirely, utterly, and completely stupid. Despite the fact that we, as a human collective, continue to pump fossil fuels into our atmosphere. Despite the fact that we, as a human collective, continue to fund militarism instead of an ending famine and homelessness. Despite the fact that we, as a human collective, continue to ignore the climate crisis. Despite the fact that we, as a human collective, continue to make these stupid decisions, each and every one of you here today is not defined by and is not utterly and totally stupid. So, Chipola's law on stupidity. Ultimately and inevitably, everyone underestimates the number of stupid people in circulation. What did we find that to mean? Well, first of all, we found that there are no entirely stupid people in the world, merely some people who make more or less stupid decisions. So when I was rereading through Chipola's quote, I found it to mean that we should never underestimate the stupid things people will do. As Einstein said, stupidity is infinite, and the limits to which humans will continue to do stupid things is limitless. As stupidity, a survival instinct is built into every single one of us. 
And even when we don't think we're being stupid, other people might perceive it as such. So if I were to ask you to raise your hands on whether or not you think that you are stupid, I hope I've changed some of your minds. And if not, I hope you come out of this questioning to some extent every action you make, but more so that you're considerate to the actions of others and those around us. Take into account what we've talked about today when you see someone doing something you think is stupid. I'm not saying we can excuse the actions of our world leaders and influencers. Most definitely, I'm not saying we can excuse the actions of our politicians, our business people, our celebrities, right? Because they have agencies and cabinets and um, advisory boards to tell them and call them out when they're being stupid. You will most definitely hear me call many a politician entirely, utterly, and completely stupid. But try not to label the everyday person around you as such. We're all human, and stupidity is built into every single one of us. And we will all continue to be that little bit stupid. Thank you.